Hey guys and welcome back to another satisfactory guide. Now today we're talking about a much requested issue and that's 14 tips on how to improve your frame rates for when you start building larger factories in Satisfactory. Not every tip will be suitable for everyone, but hopefully you'll find one or two at least that will make a huge difference. After all it has for me, I was averaging at 8 frames per second and I'm now on a healthy 35. So if you do find it helpful, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe here. Anyway, just before we jump in, a quick thank you to MildR and Spanky who were both very helpful over on Discord throwing out some other tips which I believe will help out. Let's jump straight in at number one. So. Turn off your unused machinery. Now this is especially useful if you have a backup of supplies or a bottleneck. Now don't do this manually one by one. It's best to connect each group of machines together and then having a single power line connecting that particular group of machines to the power grid. And that way you can turn everything off by removing a single power line or thus also switching it on by connecting it once again. Tip number two is to encase all conveyor buses with walls, floors and ceilings. Now it may not be the prettiest, but it does reduce rendering and since the recent update it has made a big change to frames per second. Also keep conveyor buses to a minimum. For longer distances use alternative transport like trains for example. Now I know it's buggy, but it does actually help to relieve pressure on your frames per second. Now tip number three, when transporting items along longer distances via conveyor, if this can't be avoided, try to use a single fast conveyor to its maximum capacity rather than using several separate slower conveyors. Uh, for example, if you have 270 items to transport, transport it via a Mark III belt rather than three Mark I's. Now you can also split it once it arrives at the manufacturing plant, but we want to reduce the amount of structures we're using, which ties nicely into the next tip, which is tip number four is to remove excess foundations. Now this can be a laborious task, but if you don't need them and want more frames per second, lose them. On this note, if you use multiple smaller foundations in a block, why not remove the two half sized ones and replace them with a single full size foundation. It's one less item for your computer to calculate, which doing a little like this a lot will end up going a long way. Now if you do have a lot of deleting to do, also check out the mod that allows you to remove the two second removal timer as it will save you a huge amount of time and we will be covering mods next week. Now tip number five is to use lots of smaller factories spread throughout the world to manufacture the items. Now this is because it's much easier to render a smaller factory than a massive uh, mega factory and so you'll be seeing an average drop in your frames. So maybe you started off with 35 but throughout the, f the, the world you will have an average of 25 or 30 frames per second but if you have one humongous mega factory, you're going to find that you have huge drops as everything's being pulled to there. And every time you look into that direction, you'll see your frames drop to 10 frames per second or 15 frames per second. It's much better to average it out. Uh, the other good thing with this is that because you'll be doing manufacturing elsewhere, you'll be transporting less higher tier items across longer distances, which again is going to help out your frames per second and CPU usage. Now our tip number six is if you're playing satisfactory at multiplayer, for the time being, don't host multiplayer. It tends to be a bit more uh, intensive on your CPU and thus you struggle more with frames. Now for, for example, I have a pretty good PC, but every time two or more players join my game, my frame rates take a huge crash. So let someone else who has a better computer than you uh, take the CPU workload and actually host the games where possible. Number seven is to use console commands. Now console commands can make a small difference but this is very situational and generally only really helps when you're in the first initial 10, 20 hours of your game. So I do recommend with this particular tip 
to just try it out and if you do find that um, you're having a negative impact from actually using these commands that you just revert them to normal. On a note with this, in order to activate the control panel, you do need to type in control, shift and L, and that just activates the control panel. And after that, you need to press the tilde key, uh, which for me is the top left hand corner above the tab button. And this will open the control bar at the bottom of the screen. Now from here, you can type in multiple codes. Uh, I'll list the, the ones that I have here, but for, take for example, if you want to see how many frames per second you're pulling, it's stat space FPS. And then from that point, you can type in things like r.fog space zero, which just clears all the fog in the game. There's also fx.particles, system pool, clean time 15.0, and there are a few more r.atmosphere, zero, r.bloom quality, zero, all those things can potentially make a difference for your frames per second. Now these changes will all be deleted after you reopen the game, and it can give you a few frames here and there, but like I said, it could actually be detrimental. Now tip number eight is to reduce your graphics options. Now this is talked about a lot, and is a very easy option to do, but generally speaking, it depends on how far through the playthrough you are, again, how big your, your actual factories are. The difference you're going to see is very negligible, generally speaking, but it is a really simple one to do. You can reduce the things like the draw distance or the shadow textures, the anti-aliasing. All of them are worth checking out to see if it helps pick you up some frames per second. So that's all we've managed to gather in terms of um, in-game approaches, but we have a few more now, which are certainly for outside the game, and some of them that are only for tech savvy people as well. Um, so only do these if you are very comfortable with using computers or you know what you're doing and you can have someone to help you out. Although the first one is very simple. So tip number nine, in previous updates, if you ran Chrome open at the same time as playing the game, it has had a negative impact on frames per second in game over time. Therefore, consider what windows you have open, whether it's different internet um, pages, whether you're using um, software that's CPU intensive, maybe you're video uh, recording, maybe you're encoding, maybe you're doing some photo editing, close them all down if you're not using them, if you're looking to get better frames per second. Now tip number 10 is to turn off your hyper threading. Now this can only be done um, in the BIOS, and I can't really show how to do it here, um, but this is the same for AMD's equivalent. Uh, this is because the game is not yet optimized for it and the struggles when trying to spread the load across the cores using hyperthreading. So deactivating hyperthreading can actually relieve stress on your CPU uh, when playing the game and thus increase your FPS. Just be sure to turn it back on afterwards. Tip number 11 is to upgrade your system. So if you do have an old system, or are playing on a laptop, perhaps you have some spare cash available and want to invest it in a PC or um, some upgrades for your computer. Now I do recommend if this is the case, asking for some help on our PC help section on Discord to choose the right items, but certainly a new CPU will go a long way if you have an old one. And same with a GPU, although the game isn't yet fully utilizing GPUs. And if you do have low RAM and are using a HDD, possibly upgrading the RAM or even upgrading your HDD to an SSD will actually go a long way for you. Now tip 12, to squeeze out some extra frames, you can actually overclock certain CPUs or GPUs or even RAM but this is definitely for the more tech savvy and should only be done if you have professional help and you know what you're doing and have adequate cooling available. Now this is because overclocking will push your CPU's limits or GPU's limits, but it can potentially damage your hardware so do be careful with this one if it's your first time and definitely seek out professional help first. Now tip number 13, uh, not so much to do with hardware, but keep an eye out for mods that optimize game assets. As of yet, there are very few mods available and none of them that I am aware of 
are actually available for improving and optimizing the game. It is a good idea to keep an eye out for mods as they will be supported by the devs and usually can make a huge difference. Now our final tip is actually just to, to bring this all together and bear in mind that this game is in early access. The studio has a huge amount to do with the game at the moment and obviously they want to focus on the key elements in the game and to also get the game fully functional and they will optimize the game eventually. We're just going to have to wait a little bit of time for further in-game optimizations. Now this may happen monthly or bi-monthly or solely upon release of the full game as it leaves early release. But after the game actually but after the last update, improving my frames per second by about 150% of what it was, I can quite happily say that I'm happy to wait a little longer. So there you are guys, if you did find this video helpful in any way whatsoever then please do drop a thumbs up and if you want to get in on our awesome live streams be sure to check out my Twitch you'll find the link below and don't forget to subscribe and join our discord channel to keep up to date with everything anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time ciao for now